Ministry of Health to discontinue routine COVID-19 testing at MBIA. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, January 18, 2022, I am Chrisanne Mitchell. The Ministry of Health says routine COVID-19 testing will be discontinued for arriving passengers at the Maurice Bishop International Airport, effective tomorrow, Wednesday, January 19th. While this change is being made, the ministry says a port health officer may still require a traveler to be subject to a COVID-19 test if deemed necessary based on the entry health screen. In addition, passengers arriving without the required entry test or with an incorrect test will be subject to a COVID-19 test at his or her expense prior to being processed by legal authorities. Testing of unvaccinated travelers in quarantine on day five after arrival will continue as normal and all other entry requirements will remain in force. The Ministry of Health says testing resources will now be used in the communities where needed. This has become even more important since cases among arriving travellers have been extremely low, less than 1% of the total tests done, evidencing the fact that the 72-hour pre-travel PCR testing requirement remains effective at limiting the entry of the disease. The ministry employed many strategies in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of these was testing at ports of entry, which was recently upscaled in response to the identification of the new variant, Omicron, which was discovered in November 2021. The aim of testing on arrival was to quickly detect cases, which could potentially be the new variant, in an effort to delay their introduction into Grenada. However, despite the efforts, Grenada now has community spread of Omicron, similar to the Delta variant. Grenada paid final respects to the 5th Governor General, Sir Kyle Glean, on Wednesday as he was laid to rest in his hometown of St. John. Sir Kyle passed away on December 21st at the age of 89 after serving as Governor General for five years from 2008 to 2013. The former Governor General was given a state funeral in keeping with government's policy on state and official funerals. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin, government ministers and officials of government and the Royal Grenada Police Force all convened at the St. Peter's Catholic Church in Guave St. John to bid farewell to Sir Carly. Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade said she is honored to have succeeded such a humble, hardworking public servant. She spoke of how Sir Carly's advice to her has influenced her life. I recall the sound advice he gave me when I served as chairman of the Public Service Commission during the period 2008 to 2010 and before I assumed office as Governor General in 2013. On the latter occasion, he stressed that when making certain decisions, I should always act, and I quote, out of an abundance of caution and for the avoidance of doubt, end of quote, before taking or not taking a particular action. These words of advice he disclosed to me were given to him by Dr. Francis Alexis QC, 
and have served me very well over the past eight years. His final act of long and distinguished service to our beloved country was his exemplary service as the fifth Governor General of Grenada, a role he performed with dignity and honor and with a gentle touch which won him the admiration of many Grenadians. Dr. Mitchell reminisced on Sir Carly, the politician, and how he remained humble throughout the journey, a quality he says many politicians should emulate. I had the opportunity to see him as a political figure. He seemed to be one of the few persons in the country who went into that era of responsibility and not gained too much enemies at any given time, either temporarily or permanently. This to me, sisters and brothers, may be a good way of remembering Sir Carlisle for those of us in the political hustings to take a page from his book. As I reflect, therefore, on the life of Sir Carlisle today, I recall, therefore, an exceptional person, a genuine and decent human being whose most endearing trait was probably the level of humility he displayed throughout his entire life. Sir Carly's family and the Sisters of Sorrowful Mother hosted an evening of prayer and thanksgiving on Monday evening. Many shared memories of a great man, son of the soil, who has left an indelible mark on their lives and the lives of many Grenadians. Sir Carlyle became a mentor to me, a man of deep respect and deep regard. He was humble and yet I can say that Sir Carlyle stood head and shoulders above many of those who hold leadership positions in our country. Before you lie the remains of a man who had very poor and humble beginnings, just like you. Yet, he rose from the depths and doldrums of poverty to the highest utterance of power in our country to become the Governor General of Grenada. Think about it. Think about it very seriously and very deliberately. In his public life as statesman and minister of government, Sir Carline was a person of integrity, nobility, decency, and gentleness. May the tributes and Eucharist which we celebrate as we thank him for his self-giving and thank God for his witness of faith and love inspire young people to follow in the Carlisle footsteps. The road will be different but the destination remains the same. The fullness of life for all in God's Grenada. He had a quiet disposition but possessed and exhibited a wealth of knowledge and provided helpful insights. He communicated eloquently and with clarity. As an educator, he was conversant with multiple disciplines, and at his feet, one was both enlightened and encouraged to pursue self-learning. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. That's it. Tongue up. All right, that big more I say, moving on, they're moving on. I took my best shot to keep Grenada moving. Drive on, they move. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. 
The official opening of the Grenada Consulate in Dubai over the weekend makes Grenada the first CARICOM country to have a consulate in the United Arab Emirates. To mark the occasion, a ceremony was attended by Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Business Honorable Oliver Joseph, Consul General Roseanne Benjamin, and other UAE diplomats. The consulate, which forms part of the country's overseas mission, was open in 2019. However, with the absence of the foreign minister to witness the opening, the official ribbon-cutting ceremony was postponed. Minister Joseph said it is an honor to be part of the historic opening of the consulate. He commended the Consul General for her hard work in promoting Grenada and maintaining good relations with the United Arab Emirates. I want to commend our Consul General Rosa Benjamin for the work she has been doing here. We are very pleased that we have somebody in the caliber of Rosa to represent Grenada in Dubai. I'm sure it must be a great sacrifice for her to be, leave Grenada and be here, but she has informed me that with the cooperation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all the government officials, it has made her job quite easy and therefore we can have the opening today of this council. This is a really historical moment for us in Grenada, opening the first consulate of CARICOM in Dubai. And um, we are pleased to be part of this historic occasion. So as we move forward, I invite you to visit Grenada so that you can see our beautiful island and help us promote all the investment opportunities there are in Grenada because we have a lot of investment opportunities in various areas and I'm sure Roseanne been promoting it so that we can, together our two countries, can deepen and strengthen the relations as we move forward. Consul General Her Excellency Rose Ann Benjamin expressed appreciation for the support to the government and people of Grenada from the UAE government. She anticipates continued support in the future as both countries deepen relations. Since the consulate's presence here in the United Arab Emirates, Grenada has received an enormous support by the government and people of the United Arab Emirates, a support that has been ongoing for decades. It is my hope with this official opening today, more and more collaborations can be made as we work together to make this world a better place. Finally, in the news, the head of the Human and Social Division at the OECS Commission is calling on regional governments to avoid being distracted by the misinformation and division surrounding the subject of vaccination. Dr. Carleen Radix was at the time addressing a virtual ceremony held to reveal the findings of a regional survey conducted by the Caribbean Development Research Services on vaccine hesitancy in six islands, including Grenada. Dr. Radix emphasized that governments must focus on doing everything in their power to educate and protect the vulnerable of society. She also highlighted the key role of the media in disseminating factual information to positively propel the vaccination campaigns in each country. I want to make a call for all our countries, our region, to not allow the divisions that have complicated the focus on dealing with COVID-19 to distract us from the need to consistently do everything that we need to and are willing to, to protect the most vulnerable among us while keeping our economies running. I make an appeal here to the media represented, represented as you also have an extremely important role, which I know you take seriously and which is so important currently to expose persons um, in, a, in a, a palatable way to the medical and scientific information and general experiences around vaccines, side effects and concerns. I also know the need to continue to educate the public on the importance of and efficacy of our general public health vaccines 
and even the history of our Caribbean region, which has led the world in the elimination of vaccine-preventable diseases. The Ministry of Health and Social Security recorded 470 new positive cases on Monday after conducting 2,157 tests at various locations island-wide. This now brings the total number of active cases to 3,421. The latest data points to 256 new recoveries and seven people are currently hospitalized. The ministry's aggressive contact tracing and testing campaigns continues throughout the week and on the weekends at clinics, medical facilities and pop-up locations across the country. 36,389 Grenadians are fully vaccinated. 5,792 partially vaccinated and 4,293 booster doses have been administered to date. That story has brought us to the end of the National Report for today, Tuesday, January 18, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Chris Ann Mitchell saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. Thank you.